Hi viewers, I'm Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering and Development Magazine. We're here at the Timken Company to talk about bearings and wind turbines. And joining me for that discussion is Rick Brooks. He's one of the sales managers here. Rick, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to speak with us. Glad to be here. Hey, let's do this. Let's take an imaginary tour through a, a wind turbine nacelle. Okay. We'll start at the uh, main shaft bearing. We'll step onto the, the uh, gearbox, then we'll go on to the generator. Okay? All right. Let's start with the main shaft bearing and get a handle on its size and the loads it carries. Uh, can you give us an idea of those? Main bearing is really a very challenging application in wind. You're looking at a bearing that has to handle all the loads from the wind that are coming at it. And that includes both the, the direct on loads as well as all these very dynamic loads because you've got different wind speeds closer to the ground and higher up in the air. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the massive weight of this rotor, many, many tons pushing down on that. So you're asking for a bearing that can really handle a bunch of different loads simultaneously. Well, give us an idea of the size of a bearing then. Is there a typical size for a main shaft bearing? So a typical uh, gear drive turbine, which is very common in the U.S., those are going to be about a three feet around, so mm -hmm. pretty good size. Yeah. But then you move up to a direct drive turbine, and those go up to more like six to eight feet. Now, how has the design of the main shaft bearing changed over the last decade? If you go back 20 years or so, what we used to see is predominantly spherical roller bearings, relatively uh, simple bearing. We've seen the design of those come quite a ways in the last 15 years or so. Much more tapered roller bearings, and then mm -hmm. also some of different technologies that are being used, such as coatings or heat treatment methods. What's Tipkin done to uh, facilitate some of those changes? Sure, we really like to stay on the cutting edge of technology and innovation. A couple examples here would be uh, heat treating. Uh, we've developed some heat treat methods that would reduce time to heat treat a bearing down from about three weeks down to about a day. So that really helps from the manufacturing side mm -hmm. of things. Uh, but then also we've really been on the forefront of developing technologies such as diamond-like carbon coatings that are really going to improve the performance of the bearing in the application. Mm -hmm. I see. And how has this um, brought down maybe the cost of ownership for the wind farm owners, or, or maybe even the cost of maintenance. If you look at the cost of a main bearing, let's say it's a $20,000 main bearing. Mm -hmm. That's relatively minor compared to the cost of a crane to come out and replace that main bearing, which could be 10 to 20 times that, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. when you go offshore. Yeah. So when you're talking about a technology that is gonna dramatically improve the life of the bearing and maybe add 50% of the cost to it, that cost adder really isn't all that significant relative to eliminating a quarter million dollar crane event. I see, I see. All right, let's step on to the, uh, the, the gearbox. And I've heard a term recently about the uh, uh, an integrated bearing. What is that? So you're usually gonna see those in the planet section of the bearing, of the gearbox. Mm -hmm. And that that is gonna be where you basically eliminate the outer race of the bearing mm -hmm. and machine it into the gear. Okay. And what that does is really two things. One is with that no longer having two separate pieces, you've eliminated a possible source of debris. I see. So that reduces a potential failure mode. But more importantly is it increases the capacity of the bearing so you can have the same bearing handling larger loads in a smaller area. Okay, that's significant. Uh, any other uh, gearbox technology that you're working on? Probably the biggest thing that we've seen over the last three to four years is the phenomenon known as white edge cracking, which mm. has plagued the industry mm -hmm. and a good solution to that has been using a heat treatment method called case carburization and that really gives you a much more durable bearing that's capable of resisting these uh, dynamic loads. Okay, very good. Let's step on to the, uh, the generator then. Now, okay. How do the bearings there differ from uh, what we might, might encounter in the gearbox? So they're usually going to be uh, just high speed bearings with relatively steady loads by comparison to the gearbox. So those are generally going to be conventional ball bearings. Mm -hmm. But we are going to see usually some sort of technology applied to uh, deal with the electric current in the generator. Right. So we're going to see either an insulated coated bearing mm -hmm. or actually a hybrid ceramic bearing that can handle all those damaging electric loads. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, Rick, you've answered all my questions, but if the viewers have more, uh, more uh, they wanna know, where can they look? Welcome them to go to Timken.com, and under our market section, you'll find wind energy. All right, Rick, I wanna thank you for the discussion. Viewers, thank you for your attention. Uh, you can never know too much about your job. And uh, uh, if you want more information on the wind industry in general, link over to windpowerengineering.com. That's all for now, make it a great day. Thanks.